Lecture notes for, sorry, give me a second. This is a technology thing for me. I have to think about it. I am telling you, yes. Okay, I think I have it um, set the way I want it. So these, these are the lecture notes for chapter one, the study of life. Um, there we go. And the first slide, uh, this is just a, an Im a satellite image of the earth. And just to remind you that um, the, this course is entitled biology. And biology is a Science, of course, it's a natural science, um, and the bio means life, and L-O-G-Y, logi, logi means um, study of. So it is literally the study of living things, and the only place so far that we have been able to find living things ha have has been on the planet Earth, despite what you may or may not have heard. Um, so far, it's just our planet. Um, the first section, 1.1, the science of biology, this is just um, a list of content that you should be able to understand after reading this section or after going through this section. Um, the shared characteristics of the natural sciences versus unnatural um, uh, sciences, I guess. <clears throat> sciences like computer science would not be a natural science but physics and biology and geology, chemistry are all natural science. Um, and in science, we typically use the scientific method to solve problems. So we will cover the steps of the scientific method. And when we use the scientific method, we use two types of logical reasoning processes, inductive and deductive. So we'll talk about the differences between those. And then the goals of basic science and applied science. Just a few definitions on this page. Biology, again, is the study of living things, study of living organisms, and their interactions with each other and with their environment. Science, biology is a science, and science is defined as knowledge that covers general truth or the operation of general laws, especially when that knowledge is acquired and tested by the scientific method. And then the scientific method is a method of research with defined steps that primarily um, associated with experiments, with doing um, scientific experiments and making observations, collecting data, these are images of um, living, well, picture A is is um, living thing, and then picture B is the remnants of living things. These are fossils of the organism in picture A. So if you just read the description down here, um, picture A is a light microscope photograph. So we'll just call it a light micrograph. Light microscopes are the microscopes that you use in biology class, that students typically use in biology class. Um, so most of you have probably used one before. And unfortunately, we don't use, you don't, that's the bad thing about the online course is that we don't really need a microscope because we can look at um, images of slides on the computer. So I kind of skip that part, especially in the summer. But um, it bothers me because I like for students to leave um, biology with um, having experience with the microscope. But I just have to get over it because we only have time um, for certain things. So we do have lab experiences, but um, the, unfortunately, the microscope is not one of them. 
but the light microscope is the one that's typically that's used in most general biology classes. And this image, picture A, is a, a photograph taken um, through a light microscope of cyanobacteria. And cyanobacteria in the past were called blue-green algae. Um, but they're not algae, so it's incorrect to call them blue-green algae. But they were called blue-green algae because of their color, because they, they have a, the appearance of algae. They're, they're found in the water. And um, so before being identified as cyanobacteria, that's what they were called. Um, picture B is an image of stromatolite along the shores of a lake. And stromatolites form by the layering of cyanobacteria in shallow waters. So these stromatolites um, formed over many, many, many millions of years. Um, um, they're fossils of cyanobacteria. And this is another image of a bacteria that you've probably heard about, an E. coli, Escherichia coli. Um, e. coli is, has kind of been given a bad name because it, it can cause disease, but <clears throat> what you have to remember about bacteria is it's just, just like with viruses, there are different strains, and there are virulent strains that can cause disease, um, and you can get, you can contract E. coli from, um, it's usually from consuming it. In other words, um, it get you get it into your mouth somehow. So maybe you um, are eating at a buffet um, restaurant or a, at a salad bar and someone else ate at that same buffet or salad bar and didn't wash their hands after they used the bathroom and they left some E. coli behind. Or maybe you're buying some pr fresh produce and some E. coli um, happens to be on that produce. Um, that's not very common. Uh, we hear about it usually in the media whenever it happens. But in, in those cases, um, when the E. coli is the, one of the strains that causes disease, it, it can make you sick, um, causes uh, stomach and intestinal problems. But we also have E. coli that live in our digestive tract, and they actually help us. They're normal residents of our digestive tracts that help us absorb vitamin K. Vitamin K is used in blood clotting and other, other nutrients as well. So this is an image through a scanning electron microscope. It's called a scanning electron micrograph. Bacteria are very small. So if we were to use a light microscope, we would see E. coli. If this was the image, we would see it more like that. Let's see. Little rod shaped. In fact, you wouldn't even see them. They wouldn't even look that big, but just to give you an idea, the scanning electron micro microscope allows us to see much more detail and it allows us to blow the um, image up way, way more than a light microscope does. Some more definitions here. Um, a hypothesis and a theory are two terms that students um, get mixed up and confused. Um, and mostly it's because when we use the word theory in everyday language, um, we tend to use it in a different way. I might say, I might make a statement like, I have a theory about that. And, and what I'm saying is I have a guess. But a theory in science is not a guess. And a hypothesis has often been called an educated guess, but it's also not a guess. Um, it is a suggested explanation. And there is a little slight difference between a suggested explanation for an event and just guessing randomly. You know, a guess implies that you're just randomly throwing something like brainstorming. Um, a hypothesis is something that you formulate after doing research and um, after collecting as much knowledge about your topic as you can. But it's still a suggested explanation. So that explanation has to be tested. Has to, you have to formulate and experiment and test um, the hypothesis to determine if you can accept it or reject it. 
but a theory is a tested and confirmed explanation. So it's also an explanation, but it's one that's not suggested, it's tested and confirmed. So in science, the hypothesis comes first, the theory comes after uh, the hypothesis has been tested and confirmed. The natural sciences include, um, well, natural sciences comes from the word nature. So it's any science that's related to the physical world. Um, typically, the sciences that we have at this level are chemistry. Some of you may end up taking a chemistry class, physics, um, earth science or geology, biology. You can break those science, sciences down as well. There's organic chemistry and biochemistry and um, there's botany, zoology. All of those are natural sciences, but um, the study of 